Okay, so here we are with FSUAE on an M1 Mac Pro using the native ARM version. We're going to do the 3.2.1 update. I want to show you that you don't have to panic. Um, just go ahead and make sure you've mapped an external drive that has your floppies in it. So in my case, I mapped the path to uh, like a downloads folder where all the ADFs are at. So when you're in Workbench, you can actually get to them because Workbench can auto mount ADFs, 3.2 can. So here we go, we're booted up. And all you really need to do, it's pretty, it's a fairly automated process. Just go ahead and go to your downloads folder. And of course, by default, you probably won't see anything. So you'll need to show all files. And then in my case here, you can do the right amigo Y key to auto sort, go to the update folder, go to the ADFs folder. And there's that first disk, update 3.2.1. Gonna go ahead and let's just line these up so you can see them better. There's a bunch of stuff. There's a bunch of localization disks in here you just don't really need to concern yourself with. Just start with the update 3.2.1 disk. Now when you double click this disk and you click install, you don't have to worry about floppy swaps. It's gonna take care of it for you. I don't know if this is unique to this updater or if this is a FSUAE thing, but you'll notice in the background, you can barely see it. You'll see the, there you go. The classes disk just showed up on the desktop there, yeah. It's going through and automatically grabbing the disks it needs. I'm pretty sure this is a, a 3.2 thing, actually. It's pretty handy, which, which just makes this update even easier. That's it. We're done. Now, it does mention about ejecting it because we're using an emulator. Uh, that's a virtual amount of disk, disk anyway, and it's just going to vanish as soon as we reboot. So I just kind of close up some windows here to try and tidy it up because I'm, I'm weird that way before I click reboot and all the windows will go away anyway. What's wrong with you, Q? By the way, thank you for watching Hold and Modify, YouTube's most underproduced, poorly produced Amiga channel. So upon reboot, and you're seeing this in real time, this is how long it takes to reboot in FSUEE running the ARM version on Mac. There you go. And let's check it out. See, yep, 3.2.1, yay. Uh, and then the what, the about, yeah. Um, yep, 3.2.1, Kai. And of course, let me just run through my, uh, let's see, see if the stuff works. Make sure nothing just opens up and crashes or anything. Ah, I, I always forget to assign this, and then I get lazy because 3.2 has that auto-assign feature. Of course, this doesn't survive a reboot, so that's a little annoying. Yeah, I don't have all my drives mapped, but still. Yeah, so far so good. Nothing's uh, seizing up or doing weird graphic corruptions. Or, Of course, I have to test Lightwave. That's what I do. This is what I use all this stuff for. Go ahead and click the assigns because I still haven't done that. That'll automatically assign it up for you. Then run it. Yep, okay, cool. Everything's looking good. Nice and fast. Well, reasonably fast. As I showed in a previous video, Lightwave does render quite quickly on the ARM version of FSUEE. It's not as fast as uh, a Pi Amiga, of course, but it's definitely uh, pretty, pretty quick. Let's load up the old toys demo here. This is always fun. And again, I'm just doing this to make sure that nothing has gotten weird with like the graphics libraries or gadgets or whatever just to make sure there's no corruption anything would break this because lightwave is a pretty weird program okay we'll skip through this through the magic of editing speed oh i wish it was that fast you know, on pi Mega it'd be that fast okay there you go looks good beautiful looks like a toy story thing great back then i would have crapped my pants but today we're just like eh two minutes yeah first for that that's not bad two minutes Actually, it's pretty good. That's actually pretty close to a like real world hyper Amiga speed, like a 80 megahertz of 40 or something. All right. And what else can we do? Uh, yeah, let's play some jams. Put this in the background. Make sure it plays. Doesn't do any weird ticks or stutterings or crashes, of course. What's it gonna do? What's it gonna do? It's gonna play. The Twelfth Warrior. Okay, good. Yep. Um, I saved the config just so it doesn't ask me again. 
It'll play play music next time I launch it. Okay, Vista Pro. This one's always weird. Oh, keep in mind, by the way, this is an Amiga 4000 setup, so this is all AGA, and we are not uh, mode promoting. So things like Vista Pro will launch pretty much without any weird crashes. You'd get those crashes on real original Amiga hardware too, by the way, when you mode promote it. It, uh, it, it can be mode promoted, but man, it freaks out sometimes. So this Amiga emulation setup is not mode promoted because of course it's emulated. And I have a nice, beautiful 16 uh, inch Mac screen. I don't need to mode promote anything. It looks great on here. So one of the advantages of emulation is you don't really have to bother with mode promotion because you can open up pretty much whatever screen you want and it looks great. Oh, that's looking neat. Let's bump that up. Let's actually use the uh, my favorite ham, of course, as we know I love ham. Mm -hmm. Ham 8. Give me some ham 8. Give me some overscan. There we go. All right, so this should, this should look a little better. Let's see, it's decently speedy. These aren't the greatest settings for Vista Pro, but we're just trying to do a quick demo and run through this to make sure nothing freaks out. Yep, looking good. All right. That makes me happy. I'm very happy. What else? Oh yeah, let's see if the, uh, yeah, yep, yeah, okay. This is all working. The classic Amiga sneak peek feature long before Windows had sneak peek. <laughs> I know that's not really the same thing. And I guess, yeah, I mean, off screen drag works still. I didn't freak out. Good, what is, what's in here? I mean, I'm not really up, I'm gonna leave this for like, guys like Doug and, and Chris to give you better breakdowns of this, because I, I do, I'm not really, I'm just like looking at this, I, I don't know what this stuff is. I mean, yeah, the, the, the move off camera, I, I just showed that. But there's some neat, I mean, was that even the last version? The pointer hover max, I don't know, was it? Like, I've never really understood what this is. Like this good, better, best thing. I don't know. Of course you put it on best. I have no idea. You know, I click best and I click save and I, it's, everything looks the same. I don't know what that's even for, so I, I sound silly. But yeah, this, this panel's here. That's neat. It's always been there. I just was just seeing if anything had, was obviously changed. Of course, yes, the clock. Just making sure the clock's working and it is. It is syncing the time. Good. That's something even my real Amiga still can't do. Uh, and the fonts. Oh, look at that classic font screen. That still has not changed. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, tools and stuff. Oh yeah, look at that show config. Yep. Oh, that is new. Yeah. That. Oh, there's a lot more stuff in here. Oh, that's neat. Huh. Look at this. It's got my old little, my old virtualized world in here. 68040 AGA. Oh, yeah. A lot cheaper than uh, $3,000, that's for sure. You know, like going onto eBay and trying to find a 4000 with a 68040, and then, yeah, that's what I meant by that. But I have one here that's virtual. Actually, the computer it's running on. Well, yeah, let's, let's skip that part. <laughs> Let's skip the money talk. Everything has value that you see has value. All right. So, yeah, there it is. Isn't that neat? Okay. That's it. So, thanks for watching. Bye.